Hi guys, welcome back to the Do It Yourself YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install an additional socket onto a radial or a ring main socket circuit. And I'll explain the differences between the two circuit types and what you need to look out for. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button for me. There's loads of content like this on the channel and lots more to come. So it's really worth hitting subscribe and smash the like button if this video gives you some value. Just a note for you guys that are going to be doing this job, make sure any electrical work you do in your home complies with Part P regulations. And if you're not familiar with electrical circuits, it's best to let an electrician take this one on. If you're a subscriber to the channel or you watch my videos, you'll know that I always do a description of what tools you're going to need. It, it varies too much on this one, but what I will say is you'll want 2.5 mil twin and earth wire. Hopefully if you're taking this job on, you've got a variety of tools anyway. I'm going to be showing you this on a garage circuit. However, it will apply to interior circuits too. It's the same principles right across the board. It's just a lot easier to show you this with open wiring that's not hidden in a wall inside a garage. So that's how I'm going to do this, but just imply these same practices if you're doing this within your home. First things first, isolate the system you're working on. In this case, it's garage. Make sure that's off. Also make sure anyone else that's going to be in your home or coming into your home is not going to come along and flick that back on whilst you're working. Obviously if we're doing this on sockets, you'd, you'd turn off the applicable socket circuits that you're working on. Make sure that the circuit is dead. You can use a volt pen or a socket tester or even a multimeter, anything like that, to actually check that there's no power coming to that circuit you're working on. There's two ways you can do this. You could spur off an additional socket if there's one nearby. However, I don't have one nearby, so I'm going to be putting a junction box in and working from that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a junction box in just up here. I'm going to cut into the 2.5 mil wire and run a wire down and into the top of our new socket, which will be somewhere here. Now I can do that because in this case, I am working on a radial circuit. If you're doing this on a ring main circuit, there are a few different regulations that you need to follow and i'll put a description and a diagram in now as to what your options are now my aim is to make these wiring explanations as simple for you to understand as possible first of all ring circuits the easiest way to think of a ring circuit is that the electricity runs from the consumer unit breaker with inside the consumer unit it travels along this 2.5 mil piece of wire to our first socket and then it goes along another 2.5 mil piece of wire to our second socket and so on and so forth in a loop. Okay, and the electricity returns to the consumer unit. If you're spurring off from a ring final circuit, there are some restrictions that you need to consider. First of all, you can only spur once from each existing socket on a ring final circuit. So we could not now bring another spur from this socket here, as that would overload this piece of cable. When we're talking about restrictions on ring circuits and how many spurs we can have, it's all about cable protection. There is no issue with a socket, it's all about how we protect the cable connecting the sockets together. The only time we can spur more than once on a ring final circuit is if we downfuse the circuit. The other method that we can use for spurring off a ring final circuit is to use a junction box like I am in this video, but we must ensure that its amperage rating is high enough for our circuit. We can then bring a length for cable from that into another spur. This is the spur from our existing socket and this is the spur from our junction box. So those are your two options for adding sockets onto an existing ring final circuit. In the UK, plugged appliances are protected by a 13 amp fuse or less. Now when you consider that our aim is to protect this length for cable when we create a spur, if we have two appliances at 13 amps plugged in here and our cable is rated at 26 amps, if there is a fault on our plugged appliance, the 13 amp fuse in our plugged appliance would blow, protecting this length for cable and stopping the electricity drawn through this length for cable. The reason we can't spur twice is because we could then draw too much amperage through this piece of wire here. 2.5 mil twin and earth can carry 26 amps. If we were to put another two sockets on here at 13 amps each, 
That's 52 amps. That is a dangerous load, therefore, for this piece of cable here. The only other way that we can spur twice is to add a fused connection unit onto our wire here. That then protects this piece of wire. However, if possible, I would recommend that you extend the ring circuit. So to extend the ring circuit, what we would do is we would disconnect this length of wire here, for example. So we'd do away with that. Consider that would probably be in a wall or under the floor. We would find where our new socket needs to go. So let's say over here somewhere. And we would bring a piece of wire from this socket here and then return a piece of wire to this socket here. That way we would continue our loop on the ring circuit safely. So now I'll explain a little bit to you about radial circuits. So radial circuits typically are easier understood as a daisy chain circuit. Okay, so they come out of the consumer unit from the breaker, which for sockets typically would be 16 or 20 amps along a wire to our first socket. Another piece of wire coming out of that socket to another socket. And again, a piece of wire to a third socket and so on and so on. This wire here typically would be 2.5 mil twin and earth. There are exceptions. So lighting circuits, for example, would typically be a 1 mil or a 1.5 mil. However, the breaker would typically be a 6 amp breaker. Now you're watching me install another socket on a radial circuit, I will be using a junction box to do that. So if you look in our scenario, this is our junction box. So we can have another piece of 2.5 mil twin and earth coming from that junction box, going wherever we want to our new socket. So this is our new socket. We could come off that again if we wanted and go to another socket. Or we can spur off an existing socket, like in this picture here. If you're like me and you're following this video and you want to do this with a junction box, because in my scenario, my first socket is so far away, I don't have anything near where I want to put this socket, I could bring a cable out of, of the final socket and bring it all the way back to where I want to be and use that as my spur. But to save running lots of cable, it's easier for me to just put a junction box in like this. The choice is yours, dependent on your scenario. And just know it does not matter whether you're using double sockets or single sockets on a radial circuit. The most important thing is that you use the correct wire size, in this case 2.5 mil, and the correct breaker size, in this case 20 amps. What you need to consider is the breaker must always fail before the cable. It can be dangerous if the cable is a lower rating than what our breaker is because that cable could fail causing fires. So remember, you can have spurs on spurs, as many as you want, and there are no restrictions on the radial circuit, providing that you're using the correct size breaker and the correct size cable. But if you're following this video, which is mainly designed for wiring purposes, and you're not using a junction box, if you're spurring off a socket, I have other electrical videos on the channel which will show you how to spur from a socket. So now I've explained a little bit about what your options are for adding in another socket to an existing ring final or in this case radial circuit. Let's go back to the action and I'll show you just how to do that and explain how to wire that in. First of all decide where your socket needs to be. I think mine's going to end up somewhere here. Just make a mental note in your mind for now as to where that wants to be. If you're working indoors you can actually pre-cut the hole and put your back box in wherever your socket wants to be and then we can run the wiring into that back box before we put the fascia on the box. Um, in this case, obviously, it's a little bit more simple. I'm going to be using a 30 amp rated junction box. I'm going to be putting that up there to divert the wire down into the new socket. So you could use one of these, or like I said, you can spare off the back of a socket if there's one nearby. Okay, I'm going to attach the socket to the wall now. I'm not going to emphasize too much on the process of attaching a socket to the wall. General principles apply. So we're going to be using these holes with some wall plugs and screws to attach this to brick. The reason I'm not going to go through this too much is because this could vary. You might be doing this in your house um, and putting a, a metal back box or a plastic patras box inside the wall. So this might not uh, might not apply. But if you are attaching a metal box to the wall like this, like I am in a garage, obviously you're going to want to put wall plugs in and uh, make sure that that's secured to the wall, nice and level, using a level. Okay, so. I'll let you watch this bit, but I'm not going to talk through it too much. Now 
There we go, that back box is now secure. So we can crack on with the wire. And like I said, there's a lot of varieties of this. Um, this video is mostly about how to do the wiring though, rather than how to fit uh, a socket itself or the back box itself. You can get some rubber grommets like this to protect the cable. If you're using any form of metal back box, I'd recommend that you do that so that the sharp edge can't damage the cable. In a garage, that's the way I like to, to install my sockets. So what I'm going to be doing is putting my junction box in where you can see that 2.5mm piece of wire up there. We're going to cut into that and put the junction box in there. Then we'll run the cable along, down the wall and into the top of our socket. So it's quite hard to video up there, especially because I don't really have proper lighting in here. But I'm trying to use my work lights and it's quite difficult, so bear with me. First of all, take the cap off the junction box. Fix your junction box to the wall. Again, I won't explain too much about how to actually fix a junction box to the wall because I know a lot of you are going to be spurring off an existing socket. And again, if you undertake an electrical job like this, you probably have some knowledge about how to fix things to the wall anyway. Right, so that's our junction box fixed in place. Now we'll cut the existing cable and wire that into our terminals here. You can see you've got these brass screws. We'll need to undo them so that we can wire this up. Don't cut yourself too short. Okay, consider where these need to go in. So I'd say cut that somewhere here. And you're gonna bring that in the bottom here and then your wires are going to be looped into the terminals. Strip back your wires so we can wire it into the junction box. If you're doing this from a spurred socket, the same principles apply with the wiring. If you're working on an elder property, your wiring colours may differ. Your live wire might just be red and your neutral wire might be black. In this case it is brown for live, blue for neutral and then Earth wire will be sleeved green and yellow. Strip the sleeving off those as well. And grab yourself some earth sleeve and that earth wire must always be sleeved. For now, just roughly put your wiring in place. Don't go doing these terminals up yet because then you'll just struggle once you've got the rest of your wiring in. So this wire here that runs through our existing socket, this runs to the final socket on the radial circuit. What we're gonna do is strip that one back as well. Grab yourself a length of 2.5mm twin and earth wire. As I said in my description about wire protection and what amps we can put through wire, it has to be a 2.5mm. Unless we're on a radial circuit going to something like a cooker, then you would be using a 4mm piece of wire. Make sure your length of wire is long enough to feed wherever you're putting the socket to. Strip the end and wire that in, obviously neutral to neutral, live to live, earth to earth. Make sure you do these terminals up nice and tight. Right, they're all nice and tight. Give them a tug, check that you're not getting any loose connections and none of the wires are not seated properly. So once you're happy with your wire in there, put the cap back on the junction box. And we're just gonna cut this length of cable off now. Make sure you've got enough. Obviously, if you're doing this in your home, you might be putting this cable under floorboards or down walls or things like that. So make sure that you've got enough length of cable before you go and cut it. Now we can clip that cable in place and run it into the top of the new socket. Right, once your cable's secured in place, strip your wire back. Now we're going to wire up our socket. On the back of the socket you've got neutral, live and earth. Just undo the little screws on the terminals. What you have to consider is that this is a metal back box. If you have a metal back box inside a block wall at home or anything like that, whenever they're metal, they have to be earthed. You've got an earth terminal here, so we're going to loop an earth wire into that as well. And that will also go into the earth terminal on the faceplate. Anything metal has to be earthed. So we go live, neutral, and earth. Don't do your earth terminal up yet. So cut yourself a short piece of cable. And we'll steal a piece of wire out of there. So we'll nick that bit of wire and sleeve that in earth sleeving. Insert your earth wire 
into that earthen terminal on the back box and do up the terminal screw and then you want to put both of those earth wires into the face plate of the socket join them together and do the earth terminal up now we can put that face plate back in place and do that up right so that socket is all installed wired up and in place now we need to test it once you're sure it's safe turn that circuit back on at the very minimum use a socket tester give this a test and there we go spot on just remember to test all the other sockets that are on the circuit so it's worth noting if you're doing this in a garage like I have on a 20 amp breaker you could have actually just come off the breaker you can wire two or three cables into a breaker and come directly off that however for illustration purposes so that you guys can see how this can be done right guys thanks for watching another do-it-yourself YouTube video if this video has helped you out and given you some value smash the like button and subscribe there's loads of content like this coming up there will definitely be something either already on the channel or that's going to help you out in the future so make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notifications icon so you don't miss out when i upload a video and i'll see you guys in the next one